What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Blue walkthrough. In the last part, we took a little bit of a detour, explored some places in the region with Surf, and caught our first legendary Zapdos. Now, we won't be using him on the team, he's kind of just chilling in the PC right now, but it's cool to go around and catch the legendaries, that's kind of my plan for the uh, walkthroughs to catch, you know, the other two birds as well as Mewtwo. But for now, we don't have access to them. We got to get back onto the main storyline. So I'm sitting here on Route 7 right next to Celadon City. And before you enter really any of the gates, because again, there's four, you can come from north of Vermilion, south of Cerulean, west of Lavender, or east of Celadon. Um, before you do that though, you're gonna want to pick up a fresh water lemonade or soda pop from the Celadon depart uh, department store, no, department store, um, which is why I am next to Celadon. And I've been using lemonade, so I just went ahead and stocked up on some more. Um, fresh water is probably the best thing to go with because it's the cheapest, but here is why you will need them. If you talk to this guy, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm parched. Whoa, I can have this drink? Yeah, he doesn't even, like, ask you if, uh, if you can give it to him. He just says, you know, he just assumes he can take it. But apparently he's gonna go and share it with the other guards, so now all the gates to Saffron City are open. Now keep in mind, as soon as you get to Celadon City, you can buy a fresh water or lemonade or something, give it to the guards and come to Saffron. Now, when you first get to Saffron City, you're probably gonna notice that there are a lot of Team Rocket grunts like this guy right here. Also, Pokemon Center's right there. But yeah, this place has been taken over by Team Rocket. As a matter of fact, most of the houses in here are like guarded by Team Rocket grunts, and you will need to take down the Silphco first in order to unlock the city fully. But first, this guy's house is one of the few that are not blocked, and he will give you TM29 Psychic. A very strong, well, psychic type move, obviously. And it's perfect timing because, you know, you're about to take on Team Rocket. So, um, yeah, they always have a ton of poison types. And psychic type, uh, or psychic is basically the strongest psychic move. So, I might as well get rid of Psy Beam. No point in having both here on Butta. I think he's my only mod that can learn it as well, as you can see. So, yeah, we will, uh, that's, that's definitely a big upgrade for him. We'll rock out with that for a little while. Anyways, we're gonna head up to, like, this little row of buildings. And, you know, the city's pretty big, but most of the buildings are like this. You can't enter them. They're just there for looks. But right here is the Sylph Co. Now, we're not gonna head into it just yet. There's something else I want to do in here first. But this is where you'll need to go. It is a massive building with a ton of Team Rocket grunts. And uh, you'll need to go in there in order to defeat Team Rocket once and for all. Now, this is a, a house that's blocked off right now. Once we defeat Team Rocket, we can come back and explore it because you can pick up uh, two nice items in there. Um, I don't think that house has anything going for it. And that's really about it. The Pokemart's down there. But um, the other two big attractions here are the two gyms. That's right, there are two gyms in, in this city. No, I'm just kidding. There's a, a real gym, which you can tell it's real because it says gym twice. And then there's the, like, loser reject gym over here, which is actually just used as a fighting dojo. So, um, yeah, you got these, like, black belts up here. And you can actually just walk around like these three guys if you wanted because you want to reach that guy at the very top um, because once you defeat him in a battle, you will get a very nice reward. But for the experience, I will take on all of these guys. Um, now, the place next to this is the real gym. You know, you can actually head on in and take on Sabrina immediately if you want to. However, her levels are, well, actually, they're about the same as Koga's. Her ace is also level 43. But um, I, I'm thinking I really need to uh, um, get some more levels on my team first so uh you know we'll take on the fighting dojo here we'll go into sylph Co, do all that stuff before taking on sylph Co, because psychic is a lot harder to match up with in these games there's no dark type yet the only ghost type move is like nightshade and lick which are really bad and the only bug type move can be learned by Drill, which is twin needle which isn't even that good in the first place so 
you know, most likely you're not going to have a super effective move for Psychic types. So you'll definitely want all the levels you can get. That's why I typically decide to like go take on Koga, you know, go do all the Fuchsia stuff first before coming here. But that's why some of these levels are still in like the low 30s because again, you could have come here beforehand. Um, anyways, this is the fighting dojo. You'll see a lot of fighting types, of course. So we're just flamethrowering, if that's a word, you know, we're just using flamethrower on all of them with Pixie. And here's a Machoke, so at least we're seeing some cool fighting types, you know, we're kind of, well, we're mostly past the Machops and stuff. We're seeing like Prime Apes, um, Machokes, and the two Pokemon that you will see at the end um, as your reward are two brand new fighting types that we haven't seen so far in the game. And they can be some uh, nice additions to your team if you're looking for another team member. Anyways, Pixie's level 37. Let's go ahead and get Mr. Krabs up front. But um, yeah, I was actually thinking about adding one of these guys to my team as my sixth team member, but I decided not to. Anyways, three more guys left in here. But yeah, the plan for this video is to just do this place, get it knocked out. Um, again, it's totally optional. You don't have to do the fighting dojo. And then I'm hoping to at least be able to start on the Silph Co. That place has like, what, I think it's 10 floors. Um, and you can get through there really quickly if you wanted to. But because this is a walkthrough and I was just talking about how my team needs the experience, I'm going to fight all the trainers in there. Meaning we'll spend probably like two and a half episodes in that place. Um, but the goal for this video is to just get through maybe like the first two or three floors. Um, depending on how quickly, you know, these fights go. And this isn't helping getting hit four times by Fury Swipes. But uh, yeah, Silph Co. It's just a huge building. Get ready to fight some Rocket Grunts. You got uh, a rival battle in there. You got a boss battle in there. So, you know, um, luckily there's a person that will heal you up on one of the floors. But we will cover that place mostly in the next two videos. So, um, yeah, no need to worry. Anyways, this is the final guy till we take on, like, the Karate Master. I don't really know what makes that guy the Karate Master, but, you know, we'll let him be. I mean, we're gonna beat him up anyways. But for now, we are knocking out this Mankey cheese, Mr. Krabs. You still can't one-shot a Mankey, a pre-evolution little frail monkey. Come on, Mr. Krabs. Uh, I think this guy might just have, like, three Mankeys. Actually, no, he probably has a Primate, because trainers, for some reason, love to, like, keep two of their Pokemon not evolved, and then the third one fully evolved. Like, that's definitely favoritism, you know? I wonder what the uh, other Pokemon think about it. Are they just, like, you know, do they just purposely perform badly for their trainer because they're like, well, you evolved him. Yep, I called it. He has two Mankeys and one Primate. But yeah, they're like, well, you evolved him, so we're not going to do this for you. Hmm. See, that's why I evolve all of my Pokemon, you know? I'm just that good of a trainer. And he went for an X attack. Wow, I didn't really know that random trainers would use X items, but sure. I mean, it's not going to really matter. Actually, we might... Okay, good. Yeah, I was about to say we might not kill because it looked like he was kind of in that middle range. But we did. Mr. Krabs is a beast. And now we take on the Karate Master. I am the leader here. You wish to challenge us? Expect no mercy. So, yeah, he tries to make himself act all intimidating, but he's really nothing too challenging. Um, he's just going to have two Pokemon, and it's going to be Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Both solid fighting types. They are, you know, higher level than the rest of the Mons, so... I don't know. We're already, like, almost in yellow health. I think I'll switch. But yeah, these are actually the two Pokemon that you will be able to get after you defeat this guy. Well, you'll only be able to get one of them. But, uh, you know, still, both of them are pretty nice options. For this game, though, um, Hitmonlee is much better. It has slightly more speed and attack. And it just gets access to better uh, fighting type moves. And I know Hitmonchan seems kind of cool with, like, the elemental punches. But the issue is... The um, physical special split didn't happen until Generation 4. So, um, the um, the elemental punches are special moves. And Hitmonchan's special attack is pretty awful. So, you won't really be able to get much out of Fire Punch and Ice Punch and Thunder Punch and all those moves. Which kind of sucks. 
So, um, again, I'm not even gonna bother choosing one of these guys. Uh, you know, I said it before, I'm not planning on using either of them on my team, but just to show them off, on the left is Hitmonlee, the kicking Pokemon, as you can tell, more focused on his feet and his legs, and then Hitmonchan, the punching Pokemon, he's got like the boxing gloves on. Um, so yeah, if you want to go ahead and take one, I would recommend Hitmonlee for this game, especially, but uh, it's up to you, of course. Anyways, um, we got through Saffron City relatively well. Also, yeah, the gym is blocked off by that rocket grunt until you beat Silf Coast. So you are forced to beat this building. But yeah, we got through the first part of this video within like 10 minutes, which is quicker than I thought. So I'm going to heal up and then we will get to Silf Coast. Alright, so here is the building, you know, it's like the biggest one in here, it's got a sign out front, you can't really miss it, and when you walk inside, this is the first floor, but there's really nothing going on, there's like a nice little fountain water area in the middle, but yeah, no one's here, not even like the reception lady or anything, so you're just gonna want to immediately head over to either the elevator or the stairs, now what I like to do with the Silph Co., um, when I'm fighting all the trainers is just go floor by floor work my way up However, there's an item that you can get over on the fifth floor that will make it a whole lot easier to get through this place So if I were you I would go to the fifth floor first and you will see why very soon We're just gonna head over to the left. We might have to go ahead and battle one or two guys No, we can avoid him. I think it's gonna be this guy right here So what you're gonna want to do is take this warp tile that's what makes this place pretty annoying is not only are there 10 floors, but there's warp tiles everywhere that can get you confused and lost. But anyways, take the warp tile again and fight this guy. And then we're going to go down that narrow path and that will give us the card key. Now the card key is just going to unlock um, all the locked areas on each floor. It's similar to the game corner hideout area. So you'll definitely want to pick it up. You do need it to get through this place anyway, so you might as well get it at the beginning. Um, it's needed to unlock, you know, the healing spot and to get to the room where your rival is and Giovanni is and all that junk. So I would highly recommend just getting it first. That's why we're quickly going to knock out this guy's Arbok. That's right. Maybe maybe Team Rocket's actually upgrading. No more Ekans for them. Uh, no, you'll still see, you know, the... The normal coughings, grimers. There are some scientists in here who might have like magnemites and stuff. So, you know, a bit more variety, but still, however you've been dealing with Team Rocket, just keep on doing that and you should be fine in this place. Anyways, gonna switch Sprout Jr. to the front and right over here is the card key. So once again, this will just make it 10 times easier to work your way through this place. So now that we got that, I'm just going to go back to the elevator and head down to floor two. Because again, there's nothing to do on floor one. And we are going to start working our way through this place. I think, like I said, I want to get through floor three. And then, you know, maybe in the next episode, we can knock out most of the floors. And then in the episode after that, we can uh, take on our rival and Giovanni. Because once you get to your rival, you're basically, you know, almost at the end. Um, of course, with a building this big, there are some items. Actually, there's a lot of items to get in here. Some are good, some not so good. We'll probably grab all of them. Wow, you have five mines. Yeah, that guy's team was filled with the Zubats and Golbats, so nothing crazy. We just body slammed them all to the ground. Anyways, uh, here's one of the scientists, though, so it'll be cool to see what Pokemon he has, because, you know, it's... Usually not one of the regular poison types. If anything, maybe a coughing. Uh, let's find out, though. He's got three of them. Yeah, here we go, Magnemite. But like I said, there's tons of items to get. And again, you'll probably need the card key to access a lot of them. So I said it before, just grab the card key. It makes this place a whole lot easier. If you are looking to travel through here, again, you can get through this place like incredibly quickly. If you just go straight to floor five. Fight that one dude, grab the card key, then um, the way to go is actually on floor 9. That is where the healing spot is. And once you uh, bleh, once you reach the healing spot, um, you can take a warp tile and there's like one more to take. And then you reach basically the end of the building. But yeah, as I was saying, the plan is to just get started here in this video. 
knock out most of it in the next episode. So hopefully by, oh gosh, I'm trying to think. What would it be, what would that be? Tomorrow's, at the time I'm recording this, tomorrow's episode is the Zapdos one. So that would be Saturday's episode, I think, um, is when we'd be finishing it. So that should work out pretty nicely. Anyways, I wish Butta had a better move. I might look back through all the TMs that I deposited and stuff um, in my PC. Because I think he could definitely use some of those. At least, you know, I mean, I want to keep Psychic on him. But something better than Tackle. Some other type of move. Anyways, we will fight this guy. And again, that's why it's so nice to pick up that Psychic TM before coming in here. I mean, that, that guy is just in a perfect spot. I bet you he... he had his house here because he is Mr. Psychic after all so he probably like saw that Team Rocket was coming with all their poison types he was like all right I better start handing out this TM then anyways we're not really getting too much of a use from it though with Cubone over here kind of a rare sighting I guess you know it makes sense they did go to the Pokemon Tower so these Rocket Grunts actually managed to catch some wild Pokemon very surprising gotta give them some credit Anyways, next guy is Zubat. Here we go. Now you can just get one shot, boy. Sit down. Zubat only level 29. Because, again, you can come here as soon as you get to Celadon if you wanted. Um, I will say the rival battle and stuff, though, you know, they are kind of a higher level. So, again, that's why I always go to Fuchsia and stuff. But we all play Pokemon differently, you know? Anyways, bingo, the card key opened the door, so yeah, um, that's what it does every time you, uh, every time you open the door. It says bingo for some reason. Alright, that dude just had some coughings and wheezings and grimers, and we had a double level up during that fight. Both Pixie and Butta got up a level, so we got Mr. Krabs back up front. Now right here is a lady hi hiding in the corner. She's one of the few, um, actual Sylphco employees. That are just like hiding in different rooms in here. And she will give you TM36. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't think it's anything too good. Let's find out. Yeah, it's self-destruct. So it's kind of like a last resort move, you know, if you want it. <laughs> Maybe I'll teach it to someone. I don't even know if I have anyone that can learn it. Um, I know like Electrode, Weezing, those are Pokemon that can learn it. But uh, it'd be funny if, you know, we're taking on the champion. And that's the final move that we go for. And down here is another Sylph Co. employee, but he doesn't give us anything. He's freaking lame. And right there's some beds. Unfortunately, those are not the ones that you can heal up with. And as you can tell, I'm just ignoring all the warp tiles because, I mean, they just kind of confuse me. Um, that's why I like to take it floor by floor. But there's no one down there, so let's open up this door. And I believe there's like a scientist behind here, maybe. Could be wrong. Might just be an item. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, there he is. See, see, my Gen 1 memory is serving me right. I gotta say, these guys are handing out some nice experience, though. Like, after two battles, Mr. Krabs already leveled up. Anyways, that is it for that little room. I think we might have one more trainer up here, if I'm not mistaken. Or we might already be done with Floor 3. Oh, uh, yeah, looks like we are. So, we're at almost the 19-minute mark here, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. But like I said, next time we will continue trekking through the Sylph Co. I'm hoping to get through, you know, at least floors 4 through 8 or 4 through 9. There will be a lot of battles that I'm cutting out. But uh, yeah, other than that, have a great rest of your day. Hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, deuces.